If you don't know who J.R. Alley is, the guy's an absolute master. He's got editing down. And this sky replace effect is one of his top tricks. Today, I'm gonna show you how to do it. <laughs> What's going on everyone, Kellen Reck here. Today we're gonna to go over the J.R. Alley Sky Replace. Now, first of all, if you haven't seen J.R. Alley's work, he's a YouTuber that is putting out these just incredible videos. So you gotta check this guy out, super inspiring. But one of the effects that he's been doing a lot is this sky replacement, as I showed you before this. And it looks really, really cool, and it's actually super easy to do. So the first thing you wanna actually do is go out and get your shot. Now when J.R. Alley does it, he generally frames himself in this. So that's either a window, a tunnel, some sort of framing, and there's a high contrast between the subject of your shot and that blown out background, the overexposed background. So when I did this, I used an example with myself walking up to a window. I was in very dark areas and the window was very overexposed, very bright outside. That's gonna make the keying portion of this tutorial a lot easier. So let's dive into After Effects and we're gonna make a new comp, 1920 by 1080. Right now I'm just gonna make it about 10 seconds, but it'll depend on how long your clip is. And we are going to call this background. So drag in the footage you wanna use. I just did a slight rotation because my shot was not quite centered and I scaled it in a little bit so that all of my horizons line up properly. Now, all I'm gonna do is throw on a Lumetri color and I'm just gonna bump the contrast on the whole clip just a little bit more so that my darks, I'll go to about 30 on the contrast. I'm gonna bring the highlights up by 15 and the shadows down by 15. That's gonna give me a lot more contrast in my shot so that again, the keying is a lot easier. So then you wanna scrub along in your shot and figure out the point where you want your transition to occur. So right when I'm sort of standing right here is where I think I'll have my transition occur. And what I need to do is at this point, you wanna bring in a glitch effect. So I already have this TV glitch transition overlay. So I'm just gonna take one of the glitches from the middle of this and I'm just gonna drag it right on top in my comp here go right into this. I have to scale it up to about 150 just because of the size of this. And I'm gonna give it an add transfer mode. And that'll give it that look where it feels like it's part of the clip, okay? So we have that right where we need it. I'm also going to add TV noise. Now, you don't need to add both of these. The only reason I'm doing so is because J.R. Alley has these lines in his that help sell the effect. So I like having some lines in mind, a little bit more so than just the glitch. And you can see there they are. And I'm gonna lower the opacity to about 60. Okay, so now we have our clip and right where we want the transition to occur, we have our glitch happening. At the point at which we have this happening, we wanna duplicate our background layer. Whoops. So duplicate your layer and call this keyed shot. This will be the shot that we're going to key out. Now, the keyed shot needs to cut on right as our glitch really hits full force. So right here, when it goes full screen, I'm gonna hit option left bracket and cut my keyed shot. Now, what I wanna apply a luma key to this effect. So drop the luma key effect onto our keyed shot layer, move over so you can see it clearly, and isolate the layer. Now we're only seeing the keyed shot layer. So if I hit key out brighter, the whole thing disappears, that is fine. Let's change our threshold to 250. Now we're keying out just the brightest parts of the shot, but you can see these lines don't look great here. Part of the reason it doesn't look so great right now is I didn't make the best decision when shooting this. I used a window that had a lot of these dark panes. J.R. Alley's shots generally are open windows or open frames, um, caves, tunnels pillars, things that don't have these tiny details in the middle, which makes the keying a lot easier. Were these not here, there would just be darkness. You wouldn't have these lines to deal with. Now, I could edge thin this to just make them disappear. However, that kind of starts to make it look cheap. It's like clear that you're masking it out. So I wanna keep them there and make it look as real as possible. So I'm gonna make my edge thin actually minus three. 
and my edge feather 100. What this will do is give me almost a glossy pane look so that it appears like we're looking through some sort of glass that has just a little bit of frost on it and then the background that we choose to put in. So that is how we get our keyed shot to start to look. We can remove the isolation of this layer and we see our full frame here. Now we wanna add our new background layer to this. This is whatever you want to actually show up as your new sky in the background. So I shot a time-lapse uh, and am going to use it right here. You just drop it between your keyed shot and your background layer. So if I isolate that, you can see I've just got a time-lapse of the sunset down in Florida. And I'm just gonna scale it down so it fills my frame properly. And if I click in here, we can actually see it in the background. So I'm just gonna move it so that it fits nicely into my shot fills my frame, beautiful. Now what we wanna do is I'm gonna apply a light Lumetri color to this effect, just to dial in my colors a little bit. I'll give my saturation a 150, my contrast a 40, and that'll do for now. I'm also gonna give it a glow effect, which JR Alley tends to do on his new backgrounds change the threshold from 60 to 90% and that'll make it look just a little bit nicer, like it pops a little bit. I also wanna add a mask to my new background layer, which I will call new background, I should have done this earlier, and new background, new sky, whatever you wanna call it. And I'm just gonna use the pen tool to mask around the frame here. As you see, I have really three frames that I'm dealing with, three separate windows, so I need to make sure I'm clicked on my layer here when I'm making the mask, but I need to make three separate masks. And you can go right through your body in the shot. And there we go, we've got our three frames outlined. Let's, uh, if you click on your new background, hit F. I'm also gonna add a mask of 20 pixels, or sorry, a mask feather of 20 pixels to all of these just to even it out a little bit. Great, so there's our new background in the shot. You can see that it's gonna start to glitch on if we just watch. We actually, I'm missing a step here. We need to cut the new background, option left bracket right at the point of the glitch. And here you go, just have a quick watch. Glitch is right on. There's our new background. Next is a fun part, we're gonna add a flare to this. It's gonna really give it life and make it feel like the light is pouring through the window. So what we need is a layer, new solid, and we'll call it flare. Doesn't really matter your color, I just have a black solid here. I'm gonna use my optical flares plugin. You don't need to have this plugin. There is a lens flare built in with After Effects. You can totally use that, not a big deal. You'll follow the same steps here. With the optical flares, uh, selected, I'm gonna change my render mode from on black to on transparent, that way we can see through it. And if I just go to options, I can change the look of my actual flare. So in this case, I'm gonna use something that looks like the sun. Let's go with golden light. And I'm just gonna drag the center position to right behind or currently on top of my back. Uh, that's the actual position X, Y. The center position doesn't really matter. It's just where the flare is gonna go. And I'll change my transfer mode to add. And then I'm gonna drag the flare layer behind my, or underneath my keyed shot. Now it's gonna be sitting right behind my back. I also want to cut the flare mode right where the keyed shot new background starts. So option left bracket again. That way it comes on right as my glitch happens. And I'm gonna increase my scale to 250 and my brightness to 60. Now we can see that flare popping from behind my back. Perfect. The next thing that I wanna do is I wanna add a slight color correct after the glitch happens. So I wanna go up to layer new, adjustment layer. I'm just gonna call this color correct. And you're gonna drag this just beneath your TV glitch, whatever glitch you're using. And we are going to add the Lumetri color effect onto the color correct layer. Now I wanna to go to basic correction and because we're having new orange light pouring through the window, I wanna give this a little bit of an orange color correct. So I'm gonna do 20 on my temperature and five on my tint, add 10 on my contrast. 
Now I've got a little bit more of an effect pouring in here. And I want this color correct to start in the exact same spot, so option left bracket. Now we go from this dark look here, the glitch comes in and everything's just a little bit orange tinted because of the new light and the new flare that's pouring in. The next step that we add is just gonna add to the glitch effect and make it feel like it's actually affecting the background. So if you duplicate your background layer, again to duplicate is command D and call this glitched background. And all we need is the moment just before the glitch switches over to our new background. So I'm gonna go probably two or three frames before this, option left bracket, and then just about a frame after and option right bracket. Now what I wanna add to this is an effect called arithmetic. What this is gonna do is allow us to separate our RGB channels within this effect. So let's go to within this video here. So let's change our operator to max. We're gonna up the red value to 255, it's full percent. Now if we click on glitch background and hit T and change this opacity to 25, and then we click P on that layer and slide it left or right just a little, you can see that the red channel is popping out. So what I do is go to the first frame of this effect, slide it left a little bit, click your position, go to the next frame, slide it right a little bit, go to the next frame, slide it up and left a little bit, and just move it around a little so it looks like your frame is glitching out. Perfect. Now, when you watch it, the glitch actually feels like it's affecting your whole background there. So that's just a little touch you can add. You can add multiple layers with different colors so that the blues and the reds are glitching out at different rates. Whatever you really wanna do, it's just to add a little extra to the glitch. And when I'm watching this, I'm actually going to uh, not start my TV glitch until this starts happening. So I'm gonna cut these two right at that point as well so that they all start happening together. Perfect. So if we watch this through, Everything looks pretty good. There's just a few more things that you can do to make it look a little bit better. One thing that tends to bother me, and I think you could probably finish it like this, but one thing that tends to bother me in this example is if we look close, the Luma key isn't working perfectly around my head. You can see a little bit of the clouds passing through my head here. It's really not a huge deal if it's playing quickly in the video, but if you wanna fix that, what I would recommend doing is duplicating your background layer calling this head or call it body, whatever you wanna call it, and bring it above your keyed shot. Now, we can have it cut on at the same time. All you need to really do is add a mask around where your head or your body is, whatever you want to have there. And you can see, now that's not gonna be traveling through. Obviously we have a problem here with um, the lines and you can see exactly where my mask is. So I'm just gonna hit F on that layer and make the mask feather 50. Now, it's just a little bit darker where my head is. You can't see the clouds passing through as well. You may still see them a little bit, but it's not nearly as bad. If I turn off the head layer, you can see them really easily. So that's just a nice little effect to make sure that the clouds aren't awkwardly passing through your head. There is a little bit of a halo effect going on, but I don't think it looks too bad because of the flare in the background. It just sort of appears like that's what's glowing. So there is one final step to this entire effect, and this is up to your choice whether you want this or not, but what I'll do is I'll go to my comp, which for some reason I have here labeled backgrounds. That's not what I should have done at the beginning. I should have called this sky replacement whatever you wanna call the comp, but I should have labeled it at the beginning, so don't do that. Anyways, take this whole comp and drag it onto the new comp icon here. We're gonna call this sky replacement camera. So we have our whole comp right within this comp. What I wanna do is layer new camera. Okay, okay. And at the first frame, hit P, toggle our position here, keyframe it, go to the end, and we're just gonna push in in Z space. Whoops, we need to make our sky replacement layer 3D, so click the box right there to make it 3D. And we're just pushing in in Z space. Not too much, but just subtle enough that there's a little bit of movement. 
Now, if we play it back, you can see that our shot is pushing in towards the window that we're centered on, and boom, there's our glitch, and there's our backgrounds. Now, you can add sound effects. These glitches have built-in sound effects, so as that glitch is out, we have our sound effect of the glitch. You could also then have the sound effect of the sky whooshing by, or some sort of cool sound effect that has to do with your new sky. Of course, you can throw in music or whatever you want, but overall, that's how you do it. That's the JR Alley Sky Replace effect. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I wanna come back and do more tutorials like this. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments. I wanna help you to ensure that you're getting this right and able to use it in your own videos. Go ahead and like the video if you enjoyed. Please subscribe, it really, uh, it really means a lot when you do, and definitely tune in for more videos in upcoming weeks. I post videos every Wednesday at 10 a.m. with the goal of helping you become better photographers and filmmakers. So again, thanks for watching, and we'll check you back in the next one.